everybody welcome back in today's tutorial we're going to see how to build a dash app that has a few radio buttons uh, a rain slider and uh, a plotly tree map now this is going to be the first video of two or three videos where this dash app is going to develop into uh, an AI app we're going to add an AI agent from OpenAI Swarm and this agent will be able to uh, provide the top um, five companies, defense companies, that create armaments within each country. And it's going to uh, share that information from the web down here below the tree map. But in this video, we are going to focus on the tree map and how we can dig into supply, supply countries of armament, uh, recipient countries of armaments, and what uh, the type of armaments that they are. Uh, supplying or receiving. This is the Excel sheet. So you can find uh, the Excel sheet and you can find the code in the description under the video if you'd like to follow along. In fact, if you just take this code right here and uh, in the description on the video and just copy it and put it inside your computer and uh, run it, it should be able to run as long as you have Dash and uh, Pandas uh, installed. So we're going to go over the code in a second. First, I want to explain a little bit about this cool tree map. I really like using tree maps because tree maps give you a lot of information. Here, um, we have the suppliers of armament from around the world. So you see United States supplies about, there's probably about 25% or 30% of all um, delivered uh, items. You can see in the, in the hover all the delivered uh, armaments. It could be guns, it could be uh, ships, tanks, uh, jets, engines. Russia usually does about 10%, then France, then Israel, United Kingdom. And here you have uh, smaller countries like Czech Czechia that's probably responsible for like 2% of all armament supplies around the world. And then you can dig into um, each country. So we could go into France and we can say France supplies uh, about 15% you can see here of its armament to India and then about 10 or 6% to Turkey, United Arab Emirates, Cyprus and so on and so on. And and then you can dig in more. Let's go into for example United Arab Emirates receiving armaments from France. Uh, they receive about 80% of the armaments is missiles and then they receive also armored vehicles, aircraft, sensors and engines. Uh, we don't know what engines it is, uh, but you could probably see in the Excel sheet here if you go into the description uh, column to see what type of engine it is. I did not include this column in the tree map. In the tree map, I only included three separate columns. The supplier, the recipient, or recipient and supplier, and then the armament category. Okay. Uh, the last thing in the tree map is that it's also connected to the rain slider. So if you go between 2000 and 2010, in those 11 years, this is how it looks like. But let's say if you go only to 2012, let's see what that looks like. You have still the United States and Russia are the top. What if we go only to 2023? Now you see the United States is like 60% of all armaments supplied. Uh, at least um, delivered delivered armaments uh, came from the United States and they went a big majority went to Ukraine and then to Israel and then Poland and Germany all right so how do we build this map again the code is going to be here if you just go to the charming data free uh, open um, a platform for uh, learning uh, data visualization and AI I will put the code right here under the announcement sections so you can you can learn more about it. Well, let's go to the code. Let's go here. Refresh. And let's see two maps. And if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to ask me. Okay. So first, we're importing the necessary libraries. Then we're going to turn this uh, CSV sheet that we have right here into a pandas data frame. Read CSV DF. And now we're going to build our layout. This whole section from uh, line 10 to line 35 is building our layout. So first we have our radio items, supplier and recipient, as you can see here. They're just two different strings. That's all it is. 
the initial string is going to be supplier. So if I refresh the page, you'll see it goes to supplier. And we have an ID. And then the rain slider. The rain slider is underneath here. As a minimum year is going to be the minimum year of delivery year, which is the column we're using in the data frame. The delivery year right here. So it'll be the minimum. Whatever is at least the, the smallest year will be the uh, assigned to the minimum property. And whatever the maximum year will be assigned to the maximum property. So that's why you see 2000 and 2023. But the step is going to be once. It will go, you can jump to 2001, 2002, 3, 4, 5. But the initial value chosen is going to be the minimum year, 2000, and 2023 minus 13, so 2010. Just no specific reason. I refresh the app. I want the initial years to be between 2000 to 2010. The ID we'll use in the callback, and then the markers. The markers are just what you see here as labels. I don't want 2000, 2001, 2, 2003. It just seems too much to put on one page. So I just said the 2000 mark will, will have the string 2000. The 2002 mark will have the string 02 and then 04, 06. 2010, we'll put the string, instead of saying 010 or 10, we'll, we'll put the string 2010 and then until 2023. And then we have an empty graph. Right? We don't have anything in the graph here. This is empty at the beginning. But as soon as I refresh or load the app, this callback is going to be activated. And it's going to read, let's hashtag this out, it's going to read the value of the radio button, right? Whatever value we chose, a supplier or recipient string, right here, selected value. And it's going to read the value of the years. The years is the idea of the range slider. So it's going to read this. Remember, this is a list. So this, this will be a string, either a supplier or, um, or recipient. And this will be a list of years. 2000 to 2010 will be the initial, the initial um, value. The initial um, values of the range slider. Okay. So it's going to read them. This is what it's going to have be at the beginning. All right. So we're going to say, if the selected years, this is a little uh, thing that I had to uh, insert here. If the selected years zero, so 2000, equals to selected years one to the second item right here, 2000. And this could, this could happen when we overlap, when we put them together. There is no range. They're both 2000. So if this is the case, filter the data frame on the delivery year column so it's only equal to the first item 2000 it doesn't really matter i can change this to one or zero it doesn't matter i just need one of them i don't need they're both the same so so i don't need um the range i can just pick one year however if it's not the case if the the first item is not equal to the second item this will be different. This will be 2001 or 2023 or whatever we chose, 1 or 2021 or 22. So if it is different, then do this. Filter the data frame on the delivery year uh, where we have the range, right? Between the initial year to um, the, the final year. And because we're using range, we just have to do plus 1. OK? So we have our filter data frame. We'll call it DFF. And now that we have our filter data frame, we are going to create our tree map, right? We're creating two, tree, two different tree maps here depending on this if statement. And we'll go back to this if statement in a second. So we're going to say build our tree map. We have our DFF or our filter data frame. And then we're going to build our path. This is how you build a tree map with a path. The first branch or the, uh, the root is going to be all. You see the constant. Uh, the second branch will be selected value, whatever, whatever the string of the radio button is, either supplier or recipients. In this case, it's supplier. You can see in the app, it's supplier. Uh, but it would be a string. This is what it would look like. Okay. 
We'll just leave it as selected value. The second branch will be recipient. So we have all the United States is, is one supplier and the recipients are Saudi Arabia, Israel, Iraq, Ukraine, and so on and so on. And then the armament category. This is the, this is the armament category column, right? Right here, armament category. So now you can see this path. Now this is only this only happens when the, the selected value of the radio button equals supplier. If the selected value equals uh, not else, which is recipient, then um, the third branch will be supplier. Okay? If this is recipient, we cannot have this recipient. This is recipient, this is supplier. If this is supplier, then this is recipient. You see, we just change between them. And same thing with the last category, the armaments. So here we have India as the recipient of arms from Russia. And uh, India is one of the biggest recipients, the biggest recipients, and then uh, Saudi Arabia. India received the supplies from Russia. And they received, from Russia, they received missiles, armed vehicles, engines, and aircraft. From France, they only received, did they receive more than missiles? Let's say from Germany, they received missiles and a few other things, uh, engines and aircraft. So India receives a lot of armament. Uh, this is the value is a number is delivered. This is this correlates to the size and percent proportions of the tree map and the branches. And we have our title and just the height, so just a higher tree map vertically most of the page. And we remove the margins. So that is really it. Uh, we're going to use this callback later in the next video to do uh, some AI. We're going to uh, use um, Swarm. Um, the Swarm AI from uh, from OpenAI that, that they recently created, experimental education uh, library. We're going to build agents. We're going to build transfer a, uh, transfer mechanism or functions, and we're going to give them tools: the search web and get why Yahoo Finance tools. This is going to be in in the next video, at least part of it. I might not teach everything at once. Okay, so I did go through a lot of information. If you do have questions, please um, feel free to either write me on YouTube or just join Charming Data. Go to charming-data.com and we'll have the questions here. You can either ask me the questions on the announcement page or just write me a direct message or here in the project chats. Um, me or anybody else from the community would be happy to help you. Also, come join us. We're having our monthly, uh, this is part of the monthly project. This is October, November, actually, project. We extended it because it has a lot of things that we can learn together. Um, and this is from beginners to AI experts, uh, really uh, open to anybody. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. Always remember, we are better together, so help each other out. I'll see you next time.